Good afternoon, everyone. This is Valerie Wendt with Surgent CPA Review. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar this afternoon where we're going to talk briefly about the CPA exam changes and what that means for you and how it will help you prepare for the exam. Um, and coupled with that, we will be going over the new Surgent CPA Review platform and how we have designed this platform to take those CPA exam changes into account. With me today is Liz Kohler, and I'll be turning that over to her momentarily. Um, as, and she'll introduce herself. Um, as we go through the webinar today, um, there is a question box in your webinar tool panel. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to submit those at any time. We will have time um, towards the end of this webinar to discuss um, the questions that you submitted. Um, and we are also recording this webinar. So um, sit back and um, let us uh, bring you up to speed with regard to the new CPA exam changes. And I'm going to turn it over to Liz to introduce herself. Liz? Thank you, Valerie. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I am really excited to share some up-to-date information about the changes that are coming to the CPA exam. And I have some good news for you. Can't wait to share that. And also to uh, introduce you to our new ASAP technology platform. It's a uh, real cutting edge, and um, uh, I think it's going to be have a great impact on your ability to pass the exam faster. So what I want to start with today is um, an introduction and an explanation of what is happening on the CPA exam. It's changing, and there are some, some significant changes that are taking place. And let's start with just an overview of what those changes are. First of all, the exam is going to be testing higher order skills. The examiners wanted the exam to test the skills that a newly licensed CPA needs to have on the job. And the, the way they measure this phrase, newly licensed CPA, it means someone who's been working for two years. So I know I, I, I get a lot of feedback from students and saying, you know, I'm, I'm just out of college. I don't have experience. How can I be ready to sit for the exam? And I, I want to put those worries uh, at ease because Although they're saying that, I, I think if you're coming out of college and you, you've attended a good accounting program, the skills that you need are the skills that you've been exposed to throughout your education. You know, for example, um, the, the exam does not use Excel, but there is a spreadsheet tool where you can um, use it to help solve problems. The, the task-based simulations are objective in nature. So don't worry about that phrase, what a newly licensed CPA needs to do. I, I, I don't think candidates have uh, issues in being prepared for that level. There are changes to the format and length of the exam. They're introducing a new task-based sim called an enhanced task-based simulation. BEC is going to have sims for the first time. They've altered the weights. And I also have some news about the score release timeline that I want to share with you today as well. So let's start with this higher order skills. What, what we're talking about here is a shift uh, from the lower skill sets of remembering and understanding an application, which is pretty much what they tested on the e existing exam. They're shifting to a higher order skill set, uh, including analysis and evaluation. Now, the evaluation skill is only going to be tested on auditing. And um, we can see it probably being relevant, for example, when the auditor evaluates evidence to express an opinion. So that, that's a skill set that they're going to test in that area. And it's a small section of the exam, about only 5 to 15 percent will test evaluation and audit. The existing CPA exam tests about 50 percent remembering and understanding and 50 percent application. Going forward, they want to shift. They want to get away from um, memorization. And they want to shift more towards critical thinking. Now, I know a lot of people are a little panicked by this change, but I actually think this is great. Because it's really hard to memorize all the rules that you have to know in accounting. And it's so much easier if you can um, apply the theory that you've learned in school rather than just have to memorize everything. So we, we see this shift taking place beginning April uh, 1, 2017, and I think it's actually good for candidates. Now, one of the changes that is, we'll start off with with the actual structure of the exam is that 
you're getting an additional hour in the reg section and the BEC section. So for an audit, not, not changing at all, it's going to remain a four-hour exam, uh, but they're going to give you that additional hour in reg and BEC. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, what do we need the hour for, <laughs> right? <laughs> so let me explain what they plan to do with the format, why they're giving you this additional hour. The existing CPA exam has four testlets, three multiple choice testlets, and one testlet containing um, six or seven task-based SIMs if it's in FAR audit and reg. And then in BC, there are no SIMs in the existing exam and three written communications. In the 2017 April 1 exam, there are going to be five testlets. Only two of the testlets are multiple choice. And then three are task-based simulations. So this is, a, this is one of the more significant changes we see in the exam. Now, what's the good news? Um, there are fewer multiple choice questions in FAR, Audit, and BEC compared to the existing format. REG is remaining the same. So I don't know how you feel about that multiple choice. A lot of students like that because you can guess. But it also is, you know, you only have a 25% chance of guessing right. And if you answer incorrectly, you get no partial credit. On the task-based SIMs, you can get partial credit. And simply, what they're doing in FAR, Audit, and Reg is adding one additional SIM to each one of those three sections. BEC, on the other hand, is going to have four new SIMs. So this is the part that I think is changing the most. Right now, as I said, there are no simulations on BEC. There will be four going forward. Uh, beginning April 1, 2017. And the BEC section will continue to test your written communication responses with three written communication questions. So this additional SIM that they're adding in FAR, Audit, and Reg, what it is, is something called an enhanced task-based simulation. The enhanced task-based simulation is a more comprehensive SIM than previously asked on the exam. It may contain elements or content or questions from the other sections of the exam. So for example, in audit, you could get a question that touches upon a, a theory from FAR or REG or BEC. They have told us they're going to integrate content in that one SIM. So when I describe this to new candidates, I can give you a simple analogy. If you recall in college, when you did homework problems and you had exercises for homework and then you also had problems. Well, the exercises are the, the regular task-based sims that have been asked for years. And then a, the problem that would take you know, 20, 30 minutes to solve is an example of the enhanced task-based sim. So I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, their major changes really, if you boil it down, there are fewer multiple choice questions and only one additional new SIM in FAR, Audit, and Reg. So I don't think that's that much of a change. I think that's actually pretty good news. You can get partial credit on the SIMs, whereas on the multiple choice you can't. Another thing that I like, and you can see this on the slide here, you're going to get a 15-minute break after your third testlet. That was never offered before. So that I think that's a great addition. You get to exit the, the testing portion of the facility, stretch your legs, get some fresh air. I think that's great for your ability to endure four hours of testing. They're also going to permit you to take breaks in between the testlets. However, if you do take a break in between the testlets, uh, your clock will continue to tick. When you take that 15-minute break, your exam clock will pause and that time, that break won't go against your overall time on the exam. So I think that's a significant addition, helpful to candidates as well. Now, I want to introduce you to an overall review of the different types of SIMs that are asked on the CPA exam. I think because of this new structure that you see, where you have three testlets of, of simulations, one of the most important things that you need to do as a candidate is come up with a game plan on how much time you're going to spend on each multiple choice question and on each simulation. I recommend on average that you spend about a minute and a minute or a minute and a half 
on each multiple choice question. I know that sounds short, but keep in mind that some questions you're going to be able to answer very quickly, and other questions may take a little longer. You, all need, you also need to know that the AICPA does include questions on the exam that don't count. They're experimental questions. So if you get a multiple choice question and you don't know how to answer it, it could be one of those experimental questions anyway that wouldn't count. So what I generally advise candidates to do, if they get a question and they don't know how to answer it, guess. You have four choices. Pick your favorite choice and move on. Don't dwell on the question. Don't use up any of your clock. Just, just guess and move on. We also recommend that you don't leave any questions blank. The CPA exam is a positively graded exam. It's not negatively graded. So you have a 25% chance of guessing right. Just guess. If, in, don't leave it back. Don't skip it. You don't want to leave any points on the table. Now, when it comes to the simulations, I think the, the time strategy is crucial to your ability to answer all the questions in the allotted time given on the exam. So I've pre prepared here an overview of the different types of simulations and the recommended time that I think you should, would probably want to spend on each sim. The first sim here is called a regular task-based simulation. This has been the sim that has been around for a number of years. They are objective usually in design, often contain a drop-down menu of choices. You can expect to spend about 12 to 15 minutes on that type of sim. And I'm guessing, I don't know for sure what your exam is going to look like, but you can expect to see about four or more of these types of sims in FAR, Audit, and Reg, and two, roughly two, in BEC. Now, the enhanced task-based simulation is the new sim, and I mentioned earlier it's going to take longer to solve. You can expect to, to spend about 20 to 30 minutes on this type of sim. And we do anticipate that you'll only get one of these because they do take longer to solve and you won't have enough time if you get more than one to finish the whole exam. The document review simulation was introduced in July of 2016. And I actually like this sim a lot. Now, I want to preface this by telling you you need to practice the sim before you take the exam. So if you use our software, we have ample number of document review sims in our database. The good news about these types of sims is the answer is in the question. <laughs> Actually, it's there. What you're being asked to do is review a document. And in the document are some sentences that you have to determine whether the statement in the sentence is correct or incorrect or needs to be replaced. And in order to determine if the statement is correct, you have to review documents that have been included in the problem. So the answer is in the problem. You just need to find it. And why I say practice is key is because if you don't practice and you're not used to this type of format, I think um, you won't be able to solve it in the 15 minutes to 30 minutes that we recommend. You might get lost in the problem. And, and there's nothing worse than having that happen on the exam because if you get lost or you lose your train of thought, panic starts to set in. And that is not a good feeling to have when you're taking the CPA exam. In FAR, Audit, and Reg, you can also expect to see a research simulation. These have been around for a number of years. Um, research, the research sim will not be on the BEC section of the exam. In, in each section of the exam, you will find an authoritative literature tab that contains the pronouncements relevant to that topic. So in Audit, you'll have the generally accepted auditing standards and the attestation standards and the PCOB standards. In FAR, you have GAP. And in REG, you'll have the um, IRS publications. What this question simply is, is a statement about a particular uh, rule. And you're asked to go into the authoritative literature database and find the rule. So you don't have to write anything about it. You just need to find the number of the rule and put it in the problem. You know, when they first came out with this, this was pretty novel. You know, they never had any type of simulation like this in the past. Today, I think most candidates are so used to searching and researching on the internet that it's not a, a particularly challenging task. So I anticipate that you'll only need to spend about 10 minutes on this type of question. And I also want to just give you some advice. If you get this type of question and you 
are having difficulty finding an exact match, to just, just pick the best choice and move on. The research sim is not worth that much. And if you keep searching and searching and searching, and you um, use up a lot of your time on your clock, you may run out of time. And you might not be able to answer all the other sims. And again, you could leave points on the table and end up not passing. So don't get caught up in that sim. Make sure you, you move through it rather quickly and move on to the other problems that are, are remaining in the exam. As I mentioned, BEC has written communication questions. There are three of them. Only two count. One of them is an experimental question. However, you will not know which one <laughs> doesn't count, so you have to answer all of them as if they do count. I would expect that you need to spend about 10 to 15 minutes to answer those questions effectively. The examiners are focusing on your writing skills, grammar, conciseness, clarity, organization, punctuation, spelling, things like that. So one of the big changes about this exam, if I can bring us back to the format itself, involves the fact that they're breaking up the simulations across three testlets. In the existing exam, you get one testlet, and all the sims are there. So you can open up every single tab and see what all the sims are. In this new format, you can only see the sims that are in that testlet. So in the first testlet of sims, you'll get two questions. If the enhanced test-based sim is not one of those two questions, you know it's coming down the pike. You still have it in coming up in the fourth or the fifth testlet. And so what that means is you really need to be able to identify the type of sim that you're being asked to answer. And also, you need to know how much time you want to spend on that sim. So I bring you back to this, this uh, outline. If you get a document review sim, you know you want to spend 15 to 30 minutes, no more. You know, you do your best, you answer as much as you can, and you move on. I would hate to have you get to the end of the exam and have that enhanced desk-based sim that's worth more, that it could take 20 to 30 minutes to solve, and you run out of time. So having a game plan, having a strategy in place about how much time you want to spend on each question I think is crucial to passing the 2017 exam. The weights are also changing in 2007, on April 1, 2017. The existing FAR audit and reg breakout is 60% of your points multiple choice, 40% are SIMs. As you can see now, it's 50-50. So you're getting fewer multiple choice questions in FAR and audit, and they're worth less. And you're getting more task-based simulations, and they're worth more. So the examiners are shifting the significance and the importance of the task-based simulations. They're getting away from, from placing such a greater emphasis on the multiple choice, and they're emphasizing more on the task-based simulations. The BEC section also is changing quite a bit. The existing exam, 85% multiple choice and 15% written communication. So you can see that they're reducing the multiple choice down to 50%, and the task-based simulations are worth 35%. They're keeping the written communication at 15%. So that's a big change as well. I also want to talk to you about the calendar. Now, you may be familiar with the fact that you currently can take the CPA exam in the first two quarters of every month. And that's generally the case. They did open uh, the first 10 days of the closed month uh, over the last uh, year or so, a little less than a year, because a lot of candidates wanted to try to take the exam before it changed. So starting with the um, April-May quarter, the June window will not be open at all. So you'll be able to sit in the exam in April and May. But starting with the September uh, month, they're going to reopen those first 10 days. So you'll have an additional 10 days in September, an additional uh, 10 days in December, to take the CPA exam. Now, there is a bit of bad news here, <laughs> and that is how long it's going to take for them to get your scores back. If you take the exam in the first quarter of the new exam, so April 1 through May 31st, you will not get your scores back 
until August 16th, on and about. They're saying between the 16th and 18th. Currently, it takes three weeks. So this is a major change. And a lot of candidates are um, alarmed by this. So where's the silver lining? The silver lining is that they're going to come up with a, a new passing score during this time frame. So what does that mean? They want to hold on to everybody's test paper until everybody gets to take the exam throughout all the jurisdictions where the CPA exam is given. And they want to make sure that the same percentage of candidates pass the new exam as has passed the old exam. What does that mean? It means they'll curve the exam in these initial quarters. So that is awesome news. They never curve the CPA exam. But if you take the exam in this first year, you have a really good chance that the exam will be curved. They anticipate that the scores will drop slightly. And they want to make sure that the same percentage of people continue to pass. So if you take it in the first quarter, April 1 through May 31st, it's really quarter two of the year, you'll get your scores back around August 16th. If you take it in uh, between July 1st and September 10th, you should expect to see your scores around September 20th. And then October 2nd to December 10th, you'll expect to get your scores on December 20th. I know this might wreak havoc for those of you who are coming to your 18-month clock and you might be running out of time to pass all four sections. If you do pass any sections of the exam um, or have passed any sections of the exam, you'll be able to retain that credit for 18 months. And if you um, have to take the exam after April 1st, then you're going to be subject to the new 2017 format. Okay. So that concludes my portion of the presentation. Val, I'm going to pass it over to you now. And where are you here? Are you there, Val? I am there. Um, while you are um, doing that, Liz, we did have a question come in. Um, and I sure. um, answered it privately to the person, but for the sake of everybody in the audience, um, I thought I would share this with um, everybody. Um, and that is, um, you know, you went over the different question types that are going to be on the exam, the different types of simulation questions. And mm -hmm. the person asked if our, if our CPA review course has those different types of simulation questions um, in our course. And I would answered and assured that person, and for everybody's benefit, yes, our course does include um, all of those uh, varying question types. Um, with the launch of our new platform, um, with this ASAP technology, we have actually added 100 new simulation questions um, to our database um, in addition to the ones that we had in there already. So you can get plenty of practice um, in our course. Absolutely. And I'll Thank just you, remind Beth. everyone, if you have other questions, please don't hesitate to submit those. We will um, answer them as we get towards the end of this, um, this webinar. So feel free to continue to submit those. Alrighty, I'm hoping you all can see my screen. Um, what I wanted to do now was to kind of tag on to what Liz said and talk a little bit about Surgeon's new ASAP technology and our new CPR review platform that we launched um, in the middle part of January. We're really excited about the new platform. Some of you in this webinar may already be in our course and have experienced it. For those of you um, that are not a Surgent customer, I hope what I show you today will encourage you to take advantage of um, our learning platform. So with our new platform, um, we have um, implemented or expanded upon um, the Surgent method of preparing for the exam. It's a method that we've had all along. With this new technology, we're able to um, expand upon that. And really what that means is with our software, um, we actually, the software will actually adapt to your specific learning process. So what that means for you, um, it's, it goes further than uh, just taking some front-end assessments and, um, and then going on your way studying all the content. Our software will actually continue to assess you throughout your studying and consistently change your study plan in order to drive your learning to those areas um, that you need to focus on. So we do that through uh, the delivery of what we're calling surge cards. So this was a play off our name, Surgent. So these surge cards are going to serve up content to you that's most relevant to you. So it may recommend some videos to watch. 
It may recommend some text to read. Um, so, and it will consistently change based on your progress um, through the course. Um, we feel like with this improved surgeon method, expanded surgeon method, we hope to see an improved pass rate with our program. Right now, our pass rate is pushing 90%. We would love to get that over 90%, um, and we're hoping that this new technology will help students be able to pass even better. And by following our method, um, guaranteeing your success on the exam. So our software is divided up into four phases. Uh, the first phase is an assessment phase, um, followed by a study phase, and then a study with simulation phase. So the software will actually start adding simulations to your study plan when it's appropriate to do so. And then you end with our practice phase. Um, with our new software, um, right now we know we have a lot of customers who are trying to get some portion of the exam passed before March the 10th. And so we've built into our platform the ability to change between the existing 2016 exam content and the new exam content that's going into effect April 1st. So you can actually toggle between the two uh, content outlines. We've better integrated our study planner, which I'll show you how that works. We've created these assessment quizzes that really help the software determine what you know and what you don't know. And then with these daily surge cards that I just mentioned, we will be able to dictate to you what you should study, what videos you should watch, what text you should read. We've cleaned up our question and answer layout, um, and we've improved our progress reports, and we are also adding uh, closed captioning uh, to our videos, which we think will be a great benefit for, for many people. Um, so as I mentioned, in the assessment phase, this is the first phase of your software. Uh, we have created these assessment quizzes that are going to gauge your knowledge and from those results of those quizzes start building the study plan for you. Um, and by doing so, we'll be able to maximize your study time. We know study time is at a premium for most of you. And you're trying to balance work and you're trying to balance study and whatever else may be going on in your life. And so we know that what little study time you have, you want to make sure that you're using it to your best ability. And so our new platform will help you do that. In the study phase, um, the software will begin to uh, drive your focus and uh, to practice questions. So it'll, it'll indicate specific practice questions that it wants you to work on. It'll drill into specific topic areas that it feels that you should concentrate on. And of course, the result would be you pass the exam. Um, when you get about 50% through your studies, the software is going to start adding simulation questions to your study plan. It'll start doing that automatically for you. Um, we've always shared with students that we didn't want them working simulation questions too early in their studies because those simulation questions are complex questions. They tend to cross over multiple categories, and therefore you really need to have a good base understanding of all the content categories in the exam section before you start working these simulation questions. If you work them too soon, you'll get frustrated and just feel like you want to give up, and we don't want that to happen. So the software will determine when it's appropriate for you to start working the simulation questions. And then in the practice phase, as your test date draws near, the software is going to turn your focus to be doing some practice exams to fully round out your test prep. Um, you can do as many practice exams in our software as you'd like. However, we don't recommend that you do a lot of them. We recommend that you do at least one before you go sit for the actual exam. And if you can squeeze in a second or third one, um, that will um, definitely benefit you come exam day. So let's take a look at the software. Um, when you log into the software, uh, you will be asked which section of the exam you want to start with. Um, so you'll be able to use that drop-down where it says CPA back right now, and you will be able to um, determine which section you want to start your studying. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually flip out to the actual classroom for you. And I am going to show you what the actual um, rest of the software looks like. So here is the next screen that you will see after you have selected the um, exam section. So one of the first things we're going to ask you to do is to set up your study schedule. So um, we want you to enter in the exam date. So where you see May 25th, you can use this calendar tool. And you can uh, set your exam date. Um, if you've got an actual one, put the actual date in there. If you don't have an exam date, put a date in for whatever date you're goaling yourself to sit for. So for whatever testing window you want to try and sit for the exam, just pick a date in that exam window. 
And then the software will start counting down and keep track of the number of days until your exam. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select the days of the week that you are going to set aside to study for the exam. And it's going to help the software keep track of your de upcoming deadline and help tailor your studying to make sure you're putting in the appropriate amount of time per day to meet your deadline. You can come in and edit this plan if you need to, if you pick up some days, if you need to scale back, you have the flexibility to do that. I would suggest to you that you do not study seven days a week. We highly recommend that you take one day to, um, to focus on yourself, to step away from your studies, relax, have some fun, have some time with family, um, just to kind of refresh so that when you pick back up on your next study day, you're ready to go again. Um, the other thing I would recommend as you're creating the study plan is that whatever plan you create, I suggest you stick to it. Uh, the plan will do you no good if you don't stick to your plan. So create your plan and stick to your plan. Um, the next, you'll be uh, given this really quick onboarding screen. Um, once you see this, by the way, you won't necessarily see it again unless you come back in and edit your study schedule. But you can hover over this screen and it will explain to you the various phases of our software and what uh, each of those phases means to you. So if you need to recall, um, you, know, you don't remember what's going on, you can come back here and take a look at that. And once you click Let's Go, you are going to be dumped into the assessment phase of your section. So the assessment phase, as I mentioned, is the first phase. So within each section, we have created 10 quizzes made up of 45 questions apiece. So these quizzes um, are randomly chosen questions across all the categories in the exam section. Remember, the purpose of this quiz is for the software to figure out where your strengths lie and where your weaknesses lie so that it can start creating a study plan for you. We'll keep track of your progress right here on the left-hand side of your dashboard. And as you complete each of the uh, quizzes, it will start filling in these boxes that you see here at the top. We'll give you a link here to edit your study schedule if you need to go back and then adjust that. Um, and if you ever needed to uh, change your exam section, you can click up in this upper left-hand corner to do that. But once you click Start, the software will create your quiz for you. So this is an example of how our multiple choice questions appear in the software. You um, read your question. We suggest you take your time, especially when you're in study mode. Take your time reading these questions fully understanding what it is that's being asked of you. And then once you've read the question, read all of the answer choices and choose the best possible answer. When you choose your answer and click Submit, the software will score it for you. We're going to always tell you what the correct answer is, and we're going to always give you um, the full written explanation of the question with links to various um, items associated with the question. So. We have a textbook built right into our course. Um, with our adaptive learning technology, we are not of the belief that you need to sit down and read a book from cover to cover, nor do we necessarily believe that you need to watch every single video in our course. And you could. We just don't think it's necessary. Some, in some cases, it could be a waste of time for you. What we would rather you focus on is the resource links that are going to be given to you as you work questions. And for example, we've pulled out a portion of the text that applies to this particular question. Spend your time reading these particular reference links. Um, and when you're fully um, understanding the explanation in the question, you're then ready to move on. Um, I will tell you that we incorporate a lot of prior AICPA release questions in our software. When we get those questions from the, from the AICPA, we get the question and we get the answer. We don't get any type of explanation as to why that answer is the way it is. We have gone in and we have written thorough written explanations for every single question in our software. So you're ready to move on. And when you look at your second question, um, let's say you're reading this particular question and you have no clue what it's asking you. Uh, and that may happen a lot while you're this in assessment phase. Don't freak out about it. Um, but choose, guess at your answer. But when you guess at an answer, what I'm going to suggest you do is choose your answer and then click this Marked as Guest button here at the top rather than the Submit button. What it tells the software is, I'm guessing at this answer. So even if you guess at it correctly, 
the software knows you guessed, and in the background, it's really marking it wrong. If you guessed wrong, like in this example, we're still going to show you the correct answer and the explanations and all the relevant resource links. But again, the software is trying to figure out what you know and what you don't know. And if you don't let the software know you're guessing at answers, the software is going to assume you know the topic area if you guessed at it correctly, when in reality, you're just a good guesser. So make sure you take advantage of that guess feature. Also up here at the top, you have tools. You have your, um, you have your um, calculator. You also have um, your uh, spreadsheet. Um, and so take advantage of those tools if you need to, um, if you need to work those questions. If you start um, a session and you don't have time to finish it, the software is set up to pause your session if you have not completed and that's good news. Because sometimes you may sit down and you may only be trying to grab 30 minutes on a lunch hour and you're trying to get through one of these assessments um, and it, you can't get through 45 questions in 30 minutes. So if you exit, the system will pause it and you'll see here now I have an, a button to resume that assessment. Um, the software will not do your final score of your assessment until you finish the actual quiz. So know that you can uh, take your time working through these quizzes. Now, we hear from a lot of people that these assessment quizzes um, can be a little overwhelming and some people just want to get to studying on their own. And we want you to still have that flexibility. And so we've given you the ability to exit out of this assessment phase um, if, if, you, if you need to. You'll notice that while you're in the assessment phase, the rest of the content here is locked down. And it's intentional so that it will unlock automatically when you hit study phase. But if you need to exit the assessment early, there's a button here at the bottom. Just click assessment and it will unlock the categories and, and take you to your study dashboard, which is this is what it looks like. So here on the study dashboard, um, we have up here at the top, we have your surge cards. So these could, these could vary from day to day, depending on how your study sessions are going. So your activities will be here at the top. Um, your content categories will be here at the bottom. Um, and your progress will be here over to the right. So just to show you a little bit about what these all mean, uh, this left-hand card, this is where if you um, were studying for the test to be tested before March 10th, you would want to switch this card to the 2016 outline. I'm currently on the 2017 outline for auditing. Um, if you have any pause sessions, you may see a card up here that says resume of session. And this will allow you to get right back in it and pick up where you left off. Um, we will always recommend a study uh, practice session. So these um, is a practice session that's adaptive in nature where the software is randomly pulling questions for you based on your study performance. So you'll always want to do as many study sessions using this card as you can. The next time you come back into your dashboard, you might see a card up here that says watch this particular video or read this portions of the text. It's all being driven based on your performance. As you scroll down the category, or the dashboard, you can see your exam categories, um, and you can actually start studying and watching videos specifically for each of these categories. Um, if I hit study, I'm going to pull questions strictly from the ethics section, and I have the ability to create my own study session from this content category, and I can specify the number of questions I want to work and the types of questions, either multiple choice or simulation. And then I also have the ability to filter my study session with the number of choices. The adaptive choice which means that in this category, the software is going to pull in questions based on how I've answered previous questions. All questions means it's going to look at all the questions in the category. New are questions you've never seen before, which is a great review tool as you get towards the end. We've also added an ability to see questions you've seen the least. Um, through adaptive study, you will see questions repeated occasionally because the software is going to continue to feed questions to you on a topic area until it feels like you've got sufficient mastery. You can also create a study session based on trouble questions or questions you missed the last time. And then when you hit begin session, the questions are delivered to you just like I showed you. 
Uh, you can also watch videos specific to the category. So here are all the videos in the ethics topic. And so you can click into any one of these and watch the video. We have not changed our video platform. Uh, if you cl click on a video link, the video will open in another window. Um, and we'll just start playing. And so you can actually um, watch this video. Um, and you can um, start and stop it. You can fast forward it using the slide ruler. Or you can click into the thumbnails um, as they appear here. And this is great if you need to rewind or fast forward. We give you the ability in, um, in the video to um, actually have a PDF of the slides. So you can save and print these off if you'd like. You also get a PDF of the lecture notes. These are also able to be saved and printed off. So some people may want to take notes right here on the slides. And you're able to do that. Uh, we show you here on the left the various timestamps for the various slides. And we give you the ability to take digital notes. So if you're a high tech person and you like taking notes right in a platform, you have the ability here. And these notes will stay with the specific slide that you're working on. Um, so you have your choice, either taking handwritten notes or digital notes. Um, so I'm going to exit the video and go back to my dashboard. Over here on the right-hand side of the dashboard, we're going to keep track of how many questions you are answering. Um, I will tell you that you will have the ability to go back to the assessment phase um, as long as you haven't answered um, 450 questions out of the software. We've set 450 as the threshold for that assessment phase. We figure that's a sufficient number of questions to really figure out where your weaknesses lie. Once you hit that number, you will stay in this study mode. We'll keep track of your study status, how many days to your exam, how many hours you're studying um, to date, what your trending score is. This is an important number. So here, uh, we tell people we want to, you to goal yourself to hit a minimum of a 75% trending score preferably 80 before you go sit for the exam. That's a good indicator that you're probably ready to sit. We're also going to keep track of about how much time per day of those study days you need to spend studying in order to meet your exam date. With 92 days left for my exam, I need to put in about an hour a day um, in order to be prepared. And that will adjust as you perform. We're also going to keep track of any study streaks you've got going on. This has no bearing whatsoever on your stats. It's just something fun for you to compete against yourself to see how large of a study streak you can, you can create for yourself. Or maybe you are competing against your coworker and you want to see who among you can, can study the, the most days in a row. Um, it's a feature that we're starting to implement into our product for future enhancements to our program where we start adding more gamification features to our course. Um, that will help um, build on that. Again, your study schedule is down here in your progress. Um, I showed you how to do a study session um, by category. If you want to do a study session by multiple categories, maybe you want to do a study session with category two and category three, I'm going to suggest you go into this selective study session and then just uncheck the categories that you don't want questions coming from, and then the software will pull questions just from those two categories. And you still have the ability to design your study session with the number of questions and where those questions come from. The other thing that I'll give you some shortcut tips here on your dashboard, if you click into the broader category, that category will expand. And if you want to do some very targeted studying on topic areas, you can go into these pencils for each of these categories and work questions just from this subcategory. So that's a really nice shortcut for you. So again, this is all designed to give you some control over your studying. And we have candidates that do a little bit of both. They do some their own studying by using this method or using this adaptive study feature up here through the search card that's presented to you. Um, so uh, do, do what fits you best. We know everybody studies a little differently. Um, also, um, if you scroll down here, you can see where there's a link to take the practice exam. And when I click that, it'll show me how my exam is set up. You'll notice this is the new 2017 design. Um, so we've laid it out exactly like the actual exam. It's timed, same number of test slits, same number of questions. Um, so we're trying to give you some exposure to what that new exam is going to look like. Um, I want to show you also 
um, uh, if I scroll back down here, you'll notice down here those, these boxes. So these are some ability for you, um, if you want to jump the gun and study some simulations on your own, you can study a simulation one at a time by just clicking into these gray boxes. As you've worked questions, anything that has kind of this teal color, you, you've completed that simulation and you've scored well. Um, if it's got this dark, blue um, box filled in. It's like you've done that simulation, but you didn't score quite where you should be. And so that may be worthy of some attention um, as you proceed. Um, some reports I want to show you. Um, one of the greatest things we do after every study session, we're going to give you a report of your study session. And then this session's log report keeps track of all of your study sessions. So you can go back at any time and review any of your prior study sessions. Um, and if I go into one, so this is a study session I completed back in the middle of January, I can see my report. And this is a report that's going to automatically be delivered to you immediately after each study session you do. So this report is going to show you how you scored, how much time you took. We're going to calculate your average time per question. That's important because you need to get to a point ultimately, that you're answering multiple, questions, multiple choice questions in a minute to a minute and a half. That's what you're going to have to do come exam day. So you're going to want to make sure that you are trying to answer questions efficiently and effectively. Um, we're going to pull all the questions you missed, whether you marked them as guests or missed them completely, we're going to pull them to the top of the, the page here. So you can go back in and I can actually review that question again. So I can you know, read it again and, and brush up on it. We'll show you at the bottom of your report the questions that you got correct. We pulled them to the bottom because we feel like these aren't the ones that necessarily need your most attention. We feel like the ones here at the top deserve your attention. So that's why we pulled those to the top. But the other great thing we're starting to do with our new software is based on your performance on your study sessions, whether it's an assessment quiz, whether it's an adaptive study session, or whether it's a targeted study session you did on your own, we're going to give you some recommended study actions based on that study session. So these study actions could mean maybe some links that you may want to, some video links. So these are some videos you may want to review. If you need to review some definitions, we're going to give you links to terms that were related to the questions you missed. And we're going to give you a summary of all of the text references for the questions you missed right here. So you can go right back in and review these text references all in one uh, simple spot. So this is a great report tool for you that uh, we think will, will benefit you. So take advantage of these reports. The other report that is going to be a benefit to you is your progress report. And this is a report that's going to show you by category. We group the categories together much clean, cleaner. So this is the topic area of ethics. I'm going to show you overall how you're scoring in the topic area um, and by subtopic area how you're performing. And so we're going to show you your average score. So this is your score over all attempts um, in, in that category. Um, so this is all time. Um, we're going to show you how many questions we have in the category, how many you've answered correctly, your average trending score. We're going to take your 10 most recent question attempts and, um, and average those together. Uh, ideally, as you complete your studies, your average trending score should be better than your average score because we, were, we would hope that your study sessions start improving. Um, and so this is just some great data to help you pinpoint um, how you are performing um, in the category. We also show you a lot of that data um, on your dashboard with these dials that you see here. If you hover over them, we're going to keep track of how many questions you've completed by category, of those questions, what percent you've gotten complete, that's what that number in the circle means, and then what your average score on those questions are. So again, all of this data is just to help you, um, you know, know what to study, to visually see how you're performing, and to make sure that you're ready to sit for the exam. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you've answered all of these questions and that you're scoring 75, 80, 85 percent in all these categories that your trending score is up above 75%. If that's the case, I um, mean, your exam date is just around the corner, you can be confident that you're ready to, um, to sit. Okay, 
I'm going to pause right there, and I'm going to go back um, and uh, start answering some questions. If you think of any more, um, uh, feel free to submit them. Some of the questions I may have Liz answer. Some of them I may answer if it's related to the platform. Um, so the first question, um, I think this might be better answered by Liz. So Liz, if you're still there. Um, I am. <laughs> will it be better to get the exam in April rather than rushing before April? Well, I think we're running out of time to actually try to get the exam done before April 1st. The window is going to close March 10th. So depending on how much study time you've put in and how much study time you have left to complete, um, you know, you may not be able to get the exam done before then. You know, as I explained, the, the major change is that they're adding one new sim. Um, and I, I honestly don't think that it's that big of a change. You're going to get fewer multiple choice questions. Uh, I like the fact that they're shifting away from memorization and moving more toward application and critical thinking. So if you're on, on this call and you know you are uncertain about whether to push it and rush it, you know I would say it, it, it depends on your circumstances, but you know it, I, in my opinion, there, you know, there's no reason to rush. You'll, you should be fine to get, the, to get through the April 1st exam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Time is running up. I can't believe it's almost the end of February. Um, I know. Um, for those of you that may be in our free trial, so you know, we do offer a free trial of our course um, through our website, surgeoncpreview.com. If you are in our free trial, you are actually in our new platform. So um, anybody who started this free trial since we launched the new platform, um, you should be experiencing what I just demoed um, for you. Um, and somebody just commented that the search cards that I was showing to you seem very beneficial. And that's what our desire is. We hope that the uh, software, by delivering these search cards, will help you focus your studies more effectively. Um, as I mentioned, you certainly can study on your own, you can study by category, you can watch videos by category, but as the software starts delivering suggestions for you, uh, we would suggest, it's like one of the study tips I always tell people, is we suggest that you take advantage of the work the software is doing. Uh, let it recommend some things for you to do and just follow those suggestions and it should uh, shorten your study time. Um, okay, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. Um, uh, I'll pause for a second to let some more and let you know um, as, um, as we wrap up this webinar, um, I'll be uh, reaching out to all of you attended. If you, you know, saw our invite, uh, you noticed that we were offering a discount for anybody who's not already in our program. And so I will be emailing details of that 20% discount and then from everybody who is enrolled in today's webinar and is not already a customer, um, we are going to pull randomly um, one person to receive a 50% discount offer um, on the program. So uh, look for that. Um, I'll be sending you the 20% discount information immediately. And then as soon as we pull the 50% uh, scholarship winner, um, I'll be reaching out and um, letting you know who, who that is. Um, I did have another question come in. Um, are the SIMs graded, and Liz, this is probably for you, are the SIMs graded on an all or nothing basis, or do you receive some credit for correct responses? Well, the good news is you definitely can receive partial credit. It's not on an all or nothing basis. Uh, so that's why I say, you know, you want to try and get to every single question and answer as much of each question as possible. Is even in the SIMS, they offer um, an objective type format, and oftentimes you can choose from uh, a selection of options to determine your answer. So yes, you definitely can get partial credit. Awesome. That's good news, definitely. OK, well, that is, um, it's getting to the top of the hour, and I certainly want to um, be conscious of your time. We appreciate you spending the afternoon with us. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, you can um, reach out to Liz and myself um, as I email you um, the information with regard to the discount and the thank you for attending. 
I'll make sure to include both Liz and my contact information in that email. So in the event if you need to reach out, um, you are welcome to do that. Um, we're welcome to answer any questions for you whatsoever. So again, thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, Liz, do you have any closing comments? Just uh, thank you very much for joining us, and I wish you all the best, and hopefully uh, I can help you pass the CP exam. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.